<laughs> All right. Um, boy. I gotta find me a Bible, because my Bible and all my notes are somewhere else. Oh, oh this is going to be interesting today. Okay. Uh, Do you want us to find it for you? No, nah, I know where it is. That's okay. I think we can, we can get through it. The New Testament lesson this morning is from Romans chapter 5. I just have to see what page that is. My contacts aren't working well. 1373. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one of those, you know, a walk over. The Weather Channel last night said 0% chance of precipitation. Oh, oh no. You do better. <laughs> well, of course, because I'm walking over and it's snowing on me. It's like, thank you, Lord, it's Sunday because it's snowing. I didn't know what day it was, and I'm sure, yeah, it was the right day to come to the church because it was snowing. All right, Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, page 1373. If you're following along, I'll play uh, things will be on the screen as well. Therefore, since we have been made righteous through his faithfulness combined with our faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have access by faith into this grace in which we stand through him and we boast in the hope of God's glory. But not only that, we even take pride in our problems because we know that trouble produces endurance. Endurance produces character and character produces hope. This hope doesn't put us to shame because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. While we were still weak, at the right moment, Christ died for ungodly people. It isn't often that someone will die for a righteous person, though someone, though maybe someone might dare to die for a good person. So I love the way Paul sometimes just throws these little comments in there. But God shows his love for us because while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You know, we can stop there. That is, that is a summary of the gospel, isn't it? So now that we have been made righteous by his blood, we can be even more certain that we will be saved from God's wrath through him. If we were reconciled to God through the death of his son while we were still enemies, now that we have been reconciled, how much more certain is it that we will be saved by his life? And not only that, we even take pride in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, the one through whom we now have a restored relationship with God. The word of God for the people of God. Praise Wow. These words say it all, don't they? Virtually all. You know, it's this is one of my favorite passages, and if you've been with me for, well, not, well, it doesn't even take so long. You know, I, I like to say that about several passages. Oh, this is my favorite. But this indeed is one of those that it, it just a uh, a way to summarize the fact that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We, the ungodly people, who are now, now, did you see that? Now that we have been reconciled, how much more certain is it that we will be saved by his life? A lot more. You know, We could, I could just preach about that and hopefully make you feel good this morning about the love of God through Jesus Christ. And, uh, but I wanted to, but I really want to go further than that. Because you see, uh, the Bible has a lot for us to live by. It is, in fact, God's yardstick. If we want to know, gee, how long, how long is, or how tall is this podium, or how, how long are these pews, 
what would we do? Well, probably get out a tape measure, yarn stick, see how long. Well, when we want to know things in our lives, this is God's yardstick for us. This is what will tell us what we need. And you see, it's not just about feeling good, but it's, it's about being doers of the word. There's uh, a fellow, Eric. <sighs> why didn't I write this? Why I needed my notes. Is his name is about as long as mine, and I can't remember, but I will tell you this. He's a world-class athlete, and he has uh, climbed the highest peak on all seven continents. In addition to running marathons and doing other things. So, But the thing is, is that he, as a child, he had a degenerative eye disease, and at the age of 13, he went totally blind. Now imagine climbing Mount Everest, climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, and all of these totally blind. How would he do that? Hearing. He can hear his tools, he can hear different things, but, but the other thing is he doesn't climb alone. He has others with him, and they are giving him guides, so he has someone in front of him saying, watch this on your left. Watch, be careful over here on the right, there's a little jut out. And so he's listening. He's listening and he's accomplishing. And you see, that's what we are called to do as well. Not only to hear the words, but to truly listen. Now, they say Romans is Good, but I want to go to uh, James right now. Mm -hmm. That's going to be right at the beginning of James. We can find it. Page fourteen sixty nine. All right, there we are. Thank you. We're going to look at verses nineteen to twenty five. Page fourteen sixty nine. Now that's the front page. I gotta flip the page. <coughs> if you're looking at your Bible, it says, Welcoming and doing the word. Know this, my dear brothers and sisters, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to grow angry. This is because an angry person doesn't produce God's righteousness. Therefore, with humility, set aside all moral filth and the growth of wickedness and welcome the word planted deep inside you, the very word that is able to save you. You must be doers of the word and not only hearers who mislead themselves. Those who hear but don't do the word are like those who look at their faces in a mirror. They look at themselves, walk away, and immediately they forget what they were like. But there are those who study the perfect law, the law of freedom, and continue to do it. They don't listen and then forget, but they put it into practice in their lives. They will be blessed in whatever they do. If those who claim devotion to God don't control what they say, they mislead themselves. Their devotion is worthless. So you see, James kind of puts a little spin on it. Now you need to know, uh, Martin Luther didn't care for James very much because, you know, he, he needed to get that idea across. Faith, it is by faith, you know, we're all sinners, we're wretches. And, and it's only by God's, you know, go back to Romans. We, you know, put this one away, go back to Romans. Mm -hmm. It is through that. But you see, we need to put things in balance. That's why our the byline on our church website says living our faith by word and action. Living in action word. You see, we need to give the words, but we also need to live our faith through through proper action. What action? <coughs> well, let's pick a page. 
What does Jesus say? Lots of things. And you know, sometimes sometimes we read the Bible with an eraser in our hand. We say, oops, I don't like that paper. Or maybe we'll rip the page out. <laughs> No, 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 not going there. And I guess, really, dear friends, all I, uh, there, there's lots of stories I could tell. You know, the, under the years ago, the, boy, I'm thinking, oh, more, I guess we have to go a little further back. It's getting, getting late into the 21st century, isn't it? Back in the 19th century, the telegraph was the main way of, communicating. And it's a young man who went to the telegraph office. He was looking for a job. And of course, there's a line of all other ones looking for, because there was only one job available. And you can hear all the clatter and the noise going back and forth, people up at the, the desk getting their telegraph sent or coming to receiving them. And, and you hear in the background this the clatter of the key. And uh, the young man just kind of got up, went into the office, came out a minute later with the, the manager, said, well, he's got the job. And everybody else said, just said, hey, wait a minute. What do you mean? He just walked in and we were sitting here. <laughs> what about us? Don't we get a chance? He said, you hear that clatter in the back? The telegraph has been saying, if you can hear this and understand this, the job is yours. Come on in. You see, these people, everyone had an opportunity to hear, to listen. They heard the clatter, but they didn't hear what it was saying. And many times, dear friends, we don't hear truly what God has to say for us. So Lent is that time. I'm not here to scold you or to do because I'm one of those. I'm thinking about, I thought, well, what are some examples? Oh, I know, I'd like my doctor who wants me to take my blood pressure every week and record it and go on their website and make sure, because he needs to monitor, because I have family history of high blood pressure. Do I know how many times I've done that? <laughs> Can't wait to see him this summer. I start now. Start now? Well, sure. Hey, you know what I'm going to do today? Every time it's snow. Right. Every time it's Every time it's snow. Every, time it's snow. <laughs> Every Sunday? Yeah. yeah. But you see, and we laugh about that, and yet there are times, what do we do, we do what, what God tells us to do? And Jesus says, love your enemies. If you love those who love you, pagans do that. <coughs> wow. Well, Jesus, maybe, I don't know. I can't, I, I can't do that. Let me skip over that page. You see, we need, we need to hear the word. We need to listen and, and yell. Yeah, we're anxious to, to rely on God to heal us. And you know what? There's lots of words in there that tell us that too. If we'll only listen. But we think God wants us to be strong and do it ourselves. Well, that's the American way. Really, God's way is put ourselves in His hands. That's all he's asking us to do. So during the season of Lent, allow yourself to be placed into God's hands. You got to do it. And like that, Eric, get together with others. Find a way. Here it comes again. Christianity is not a solo sport. Mm -hmm. We need each other. We need to be bound together. Thinking of those snow piles out in the, in the parking lot. Did you notice we still have snow piles? Why is that? It's because they're all, all that snow is clung together. How do we get rid of it? Take a shovel and spread it out all over. Separate all that snow. But clump together. We need to, 
to clump ourselves together, folks. We need to be strong. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you indeed for giving us the gift of Jesus, and we thank you for your word, for giving us a yardstick because it's a tough world out there. It is indeed a tough world. And as comforting as it is to be here, knowing that this room is filled with your Holy Spirit, filled with our friends and our church family, we all need to leave this place. And you call us to be a beacon, a light, to be your body, to live your word. We need your strength. Wow. We need your strength, Lord. We need your courage. We need your love. In the sweet, blessed name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.